last problem before we go here. Uh, this is a long question. Again, this is a pre this is uh, very much a probably a university level question or a very, very hard grade 12 question. Just because we're given we are given our density here, we have to somehow find um, in through density, we're given our mass and then our moles and our concentration, and we're given some type of mass percent. So we're taking our grade 11 knowledge and we are extending it to kind of grade 12. You have to write the ionization uh, equation here and also our equilibrium equation here as well. And then from our POH, we have to actually work backwards to solve for a concentration of our hydroxide ion and then figure out uh, our KB from our KA value that's given and then uh, plug it into our equilibrium constant kind of equation to solve for the concentration of hypochlorite. And then given that, then we can use uh, our relationship between concentration and volume to figure out our uh, what what volume was needed in the first place here. So this is a very, very actually tough problem to solve. So this is probably, I would actually rank this probably as a university question rather than a high school question here. But it's also very, very doable for a high school student as well. Uh, probably more so in a thinking problem. So this here is number seven. Let's look at number eight here. So it says, which of one of the following molecules have, has a zero dipole moment? Anyway, I want to explain, right? So uh, I want a, no, oh, a non-zero dipole moment, sorry. I'm given f uh, four compounds, so I'm just going to draw this out here. So I have CO2. So A here is CO2. I'm going to draw out the compound here. And this here is, uh, this here is, oh, sorry. I flipped it up. Sorry. <laughs> That's why I looked weird. I have CO2 here. And as you can see, these dipole moments are going to cancel each other, right? Again, I have partial negative here. This is partial negative here. This here would be a partial positive because, again, I have these lone pairs here, right? I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, you're going to see that these dipole moments here are going to cancel out, right? This, this vector and this vector is going to cancel out. So therefore, I actually have this here is a nonpolar molecule. So this here is nonpolar. So I actually have no dipole moment here. So this is a, this here is a, um, this here is a, uh, this here is a zero dipole moment. So you're right here, zero dipole. And we only have a zero dipole because the elements on both sides here are the same and it cancels out, right? So this here is a zero dipole. I have Al, Br3, so I can write Al here in the middle, and then Br3 would be Br, Br, and Br. And again, for this guy here, bromine here is going to basically, um, basically going to uh, stretch this out right again i have albr here this is in a trigonal planar uh geometry here if you looked at our periodic table al here belongs here and it's actually going to be hybridized right boron here can make three bonds aluminum here can also make three bonds here um and in this case here this is a trigonal planar geometry according to vesper i don't have any lone pairs here so or um so they basically in trigonal planar they basically cancel out the uh, dipole moments here so this here is also zero dipole if you need a refresher on Vesper theory, you can always Google a Vesper theory kind of um, chart here, and I'll show you that Vesper, uh, Vesper chart. And this will show you basically, um, this would show you uh, how it would how it would bond, right? So if I look at, um, let me maximize this for you. If I look at trigonal planar, this here is AX3, right? This here does not have, it doesn't have a lone pair, right? This aluminum here does not have a lone pair because it's going to hybridize to form, um, to have uh, three bonds created, right? It can hybridize to create a half filled shell so that three orbitals can, uh, three or sorry, three um, bromines can bond to this guy here. So they have no lone pairs here. So this here is also a zero dipole. C here is CO or C here is MGBR2. MGBr2. MGBr2 has no dipoles because this here is an ionic compound. Very, very simple. Here's an ionic compound, which means it doesn't even have a dipole moment in the first place. Again, the, I, the, if, when dissociated water, these two guys are going to form ions. And then D here is Br2. And Br2 here does not have a dipole moment because it's exactly the same, right? They're, these guys, these two guys here are the same elements here and they have a, they don't have a dipole moment because a dipole moment is basically a difference of electronegativity, right? So this guy here is also zero dipole. And finally for E here, I have F bonded Br. And this here, um, this compound here, I indeed do have a electronegativity difference, right? This fluorine here is going to pull electronegativity away from this 
bromine here. So there's a net dipole that's going this way. Um, and the reason why is that if I'm looking at my periodic table here, fluorine here is the most electronegative uh, element. And as I go down in the periodic table, it's actually going to decrease in electronegativity due to the increase in atomic radius here. So uh, knowing that, I know that fluorine is going to pull electron, uh, electron density away from this bromine. So therefore, this here creates a dipole moment. So this here is a non-zero dipole moment. And this solution here is correct. So E here is correct, right? So this here is the correct answer. And as you can see, F and BR are, they have um, a difference in electron activity. That's good. ALBR3 is a trigonal planar. So this guy has a zero dipole. CO2 is linear, also has a zero dipole. That's good. BR2 is nonpolar because it is a, it's simply just the same same element, right? It's not going to have a lot of difference in electron activity. And MGBR2 is an uh, ionic compound. So it doesn't even have a transfer electron. So the solution here is correct. Good analysis here. So that's going to be all for today. I think I've only went over eight questions, which is totally fine. Um, we can pick off. Uh, we could pick up where we left off probably on Thursday when we're talking about these grade level questions. Again, my name is Joey. Uh, I stream basically uh, Monday and Friday. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays are basically my math sessions, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays are my chemistry sessions. So you can definitely check me out there. Again, if you like and if you like these uh, YouTube videos and these live streams, uh, all these are pre-recorded, or all these are sorry, not pre-recorded, but these are going to be posted um, after the live stream on our YouTube channel at YouTube.com/slash One Class. So you can access them there at any time. Again, my name is Joey. Um, thanks. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.